Howdy friends! We want to welcome you to the channel and to really enjoy this channel you need this right here, the remote. Because I knew the only way to keep my sanity doing this would be to explore my interests which are many and varied rather than being a niche channel. I have brought you a whole network at your fingertips. There are 18 playlists and to enjoy it to the maximum you need to check out what they are and find which ones you like. And you can go for the grizzly bear encounters in Glacier Park for the travel and adventure, for the music that I've done in 37 countries, for the cool cars and trucks, for the winter skiing, rodeo, surfing, <laughs> for the most popular of all my channels, the Bigfoot, and lots of other stuff. So make sure to subscribe and turn on the little notification bell because I'm a hard working videographer that brings you a whole network at your fingertips. Well, let's see what's on today, hon. There's a cool big rock that you go by before you get to the pool. Oh, sweet. There's at least a stream coming through. I know it's been pretty dry and it's a little dried out, but at least there's some water. Okay. Wow, that looks like a big catfish. Is that what these are? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot over there. Oh, it's a beautiful warm day in the water and awesome and refreshing. It's a hot day, so he needs to hold <laughs> it. Is it deep, Jim? Oh, Ooh, that was really nice. Careful on it, you might. Oh man, there's got to be a yeah, a lot on it. Catfish right there. <laughs> you can't because they're gonna run away. <laughs> Touch them. Oh my oh, gosh. Okay. I had some insane comments on my last show, the Incredible Bigfoot Documentary 3. And you can read them in the comments. But I had a guy named Dwayne E that emailed me this amazing story. Now I know that you guys really enjoy the person who had the experience telling the experience. You know, people that are over like retirement age now, they had to really bear a cross where believing or reporting a Bigfoot sighting was concerned because it was almost ridiculed in that era to believe in Bigfoot or to report a sighting. You know, now it's kind of the cool end thing. Everybody's coming in my store to get a Bigfoot stuffed doll or Bigfoot mug or Bigfoot t-shirt. But in the early days, people like Dwayne or, or, or Dave, they really had to be shush shush about it. In fact, Dwayne could have probably lost his job if he would have violated the boss's orders and spoke freely of this incident. But now he felt, now that he's retired and his job is not in jeopardy, he's willing to speak, but he didn't want to go on camera to do so. But I'm so grateful that he's given me permission to report this amazing incident that involved the whole BLM Fish and Game and other agencies. That happened in Oregon near a stream called Baker Creek. The incident took place around Baker Creek. This is in the McDonald Forest region of Oregon. And I'm going to read you the exact text from Duane E. about the incident. Hello, I've been watching your Bigfoot film on YouTube and remembered an incident that happened in 1979 in Oregon. I worked for BLM for 35 years as a road inspector. My job was to oversee construction of timber access roads in Coos and Curry counties. A road building company from Myrtle Point, Oregon, LC Roads, was the low bidder on a road extending into an unlogged area south of Powers, Oregon, Baker Creek, Upper Sixes River region. 
During the month of August, some vandalism started on the road job. Barrels turned over and small trees broke off and packed out to the new road and placed up and down the dirt road for about two miles. Do you guys remember on our Bigfoot expedition in the last show, we found that unusually broken off small tree at about eight feet? Just like I found a broken tree. That's pretty, that's either a moose or like a huge humanoid. There's no human that would be tall enough to break that tree. It should be noted that the road had a steel gate on it some five miles from the job site to prevent entry into this area. The boss of this road crew was Dave. He asked that the last name be omitted. A well-respected road builder from this area. As the story goes, he was at the end of the new spur servicing a D8 cat when something caught his nose. He said it was the worst smell he had ever smelt out in the forest. Moments later, he glanced up the road toward his service vehicle and saw a large animal walk out to the road, reach inside his service vehicle window, and pull out a sack of oranges that was in the net type of sack. He was so shocked, he just stayed on his knees watching this animal for several minutes. He said it was something unknown to him. He described it as walking upright, hair all over its body, except around eyes and upper part of the nose. The animal was over eight feet tall and several hundred pounds in weight. Dave thought it was around nine feet tall, but so as not to exaggerate, he settled at eight feet as he compared it with the service vehicle. When it turned to walk away, he noticed it had fecal matter dried on its butt area. It walked up the road 200 yards and began eating the oranges, peels and all. After eating the whole sack of oranges, it disappeared into the timber. I was called by Dave Monday morning requesting I come up to the job site to look at some track found next to the service truck. I casted 19 tracks which were 19 inches long and 8 inches wide. They were near and behind the truck in the soft dirt where the animal had walked off. I don't know what he saw or what made those prints, but I suspect a Sasquatch now. There is no doubt in my mind Dave saw what he said he saw. The cast remained at BLM headquarters in Coos Bay, Oregon for years before they came up missing. Duane E. Someone wrote me a nice letter saying, what we love about your Bigfoot documentaries is it's not all about the spooky music and the dramatizations. It's just credible people telling their story and then letting us decide what we think of it. So obviously I endeavored to get Duane to tell the story himself in a dual screen YouTube feed, but he's been retired a number of years and was not interested in that task. But I'm so grateful that he at least gave me permission to read these to you. I corresponded with him a little more about the incident and here's some additional information he gave. Duane goes on to say that he had a track specialist from Fish and Wildlife come and make the casts. He said six were at the district headquarters of BLM and the rest were sent to colleges for ID. He said that Dave called all of the employees, including himself, on Monday morning into his office and said, you know, guys, we got to keep this quiet. Don't tell other employees. Don't tell people. Reading. Yes, I was called into the office and I was the one who decided to have the prints cast around 18 inches by 8 inches in size. Dave thought the creature was near 9 feet tall, but settled on 8 using the service truck as a measurement. The sail was pulled by BLM. The sail was pulled by BLM and never offered for sale again. 
My feeling is the biologists knew what this creature was and decided to block the sale, thinking the animal might be native to that area. They got really squirrely after the first casts were made. I don't worry about job termination now because I retired years ago, Dwayne E. says. The BLM and the United States Forest Service have known about these animals for many years, actually since the 1930s, but felt it was important to keep it out of public knowledge to prevent hunters going after them for monetary gain or killing a very rare animal. The whole situation was handled very badly by BLM upper level personnel. They destroyed the tracks along the roadbed to keep the story from getting into the newspapers. According to Dave, the Sasquatch was dark brown to black in color. Its face was more human-like than ape. The tracks had five toes on each foot the tracks showed clear dermal ridges on both feet. The arms were longer than normal men. The eyes were very dull yellow looking. The hair looked to be about four inches long. Several minutes before sighting, Dave heard loud whistles coming from the timber. The animal was male. The teeth were yellow stained. This was the only actual sighting from that job. After the road was completed, the agency removed the timber sale from auction. Some of you have asked me why I think that this has been covered up by the government. My reply was, I think that it would prevent the harvesting of timber in thousands and thousands of acres of land that both loggers and timber mills desire for the continuation of their industry. Biologists were called in, but were never able to track the animal down. The supervisor called employees into his office and instructed us not to discuss the incident with other employees or with the public. I don't often comment my personal feelings on the 29 interviews I have now conducted, but to me, this has authenticity written all over it. And I really want to thank Dwayne E. and his boss, Dave O., for sharing this vital information with us. Well, there you have it, friends. I did my best to report it just the way the emails came in to me from Dwayne. But now you let me know what you think in the comments below about the orange stealing Bigfoot of Baker Creek. And here it is, the beautiful Hamilton Pool Preserve. even some, I think those are called stalactites growing up on the roof of it. What you trying to catch, babe? The tiny one. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm just looking for it. A tiny fish? Yeah. I kind of tried to catch one of those three-pound catfish, and I got pretty close to doing so. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a very pretty dive because I couldn't see how deep it was and there was a possibility it was only maybe four feet deep so I did a really kind of a shallowish ugly dive.